hear Link yelling. I don't know why he's yelling this morning. He's really excited for some reason. Good morning, Duke. Good morning. Yes. Say hi. Say hi, buddy. Are you barking at all the things this morning? Mama's been listening to you. Are you barking at all the things? Mm. Peers are the best. Except for the like 3 a.m. barking for no reason. Not the most fun. So today I thought I would show you guys some of my like basic goat care. We've got some things, calf care at the moment, some things to take care of today with the girls. We're gonna worm everybody. I really need to trim hose. Probably gonna save that for its own video. Why did I come in here? Cat food. Um, just because I want that to be a good quality video. There you go. Feed the kitty. Where's Hank? Nowhere to be found. We're also going to mow their pasture today. I mowed the boys' pasture earlier in the week. I brush hogged it. I'm going to mow this one with the mower, I think. I'm going to do some of that kind of stuff today and just talk a little bit about how we manage everybody. Let's see how that goes. You can see we've got everybody kind of split up. She's going to wander out. I'm hoping there's something else. Nate, are you choked? So I'm going to leave them. I don't typically lock them in. Um, it's nice to be able to separate them. Because a lot of times what will happen is, like Daisy and Zelda, and I see, are more dominant. And Zelda has a tendency to go feeder to feeder to feeder eating and knocking everybody off. They're going to argue a little bit. Um, so, this is kind of good. Patty and her hair bow. Um, just to kind of give everybody an opportunity to have some breakfast since we have so many. But I'm going to leave them locked up so that I can worm everybody. And I'm going to actually try to weigh a couple of them this morning. See Patty's hair bow that she's got that's a stick walk over here. Do you have a stick taped to your head? It's mommy me. She has a stick taped to her head right now because she keeps getting her head stuck in the fence. So I have come out, I mean, at least three to four times a day she's getting her head stuck in the fence. And most little goats that I've had that do this, they figure it out. Like they don't like being stuck and they quit. And I think the problem is it's fall, um, even though it's a million freaking degrees outside. Um, it's fall, and so the grass is starting to have less nutrients in it. And our neighbors have this really nice <laughs> shrubbery out here. Um, and it's heavy. So you can see these bushes. And she's sticking her head through. And you can see where they've cleaned off. They're pretty indiscriminate hedge trimmers at this point. So they've trimmed all this down. And so she's getting her head stuck, sticking it through to eat this because the grass just doesn't have, this is all seeded out and it doesn't have the nutrients in it. Hi, sweetheart. So I think that is part of the problem. So what I'm going to do today 
is mow this down and it may seem counterintuitive that I'm going to mow this, um, but there's a reason that we do that. So basically we're going to mow this because goats are browsers, they're not grazers. And what you can, you probably can't tell, but there are like bald patches over here and there are bald patches um, kind of in the corners of the pasture in different spots where weeds grow and there's more clover than there is grass. And that's what they would prefer to eat. So that's what they're gonna do is, sorry, I just stepped in the hole. Um, they're gonna eat the weeds, leave the grass. And so they're gonna eat over and over in the same spot. Yeah, I know you're mad, you're pinned up. Um, which means they're going to poop in the same spot, which means they're going to get an increased parasite load because they're pooping and eating over and over in the same spot. And that's what we want to avoid this winter. Um, when there gets to be a point where there's just not really anything left, I may lock them in the barns with their hay feeder, with a couple of hay feeders and hay, and just keep them off pasture in general to keep them from constantly re-exposing themselves to parasites. It's a, it's a constant balance and you can do everything right and still lose the animal to parasites. I think that's what's really frustrating is even working with our vet, they're kind of like, you're gonna lose part of your herd to parasites all the time. And I find that hard to accept, but I understand we live in the South. We borderline having Midwestern climate, although this year, it being a million degrees in September. All right, let's feed these friends. So I brush hogged all this um, two days ago because Gobbles has pretty severe pink eye right now and I needed to get the height down to where she wasn't getting the grass seed in her eye or this nasty pigweed because it's just not healing. So I brush hogged all this, closed gates so that they can't get in um, down the chute where there's blackberry and thorn and everything. And the one thing that I forgot is that the pigs have broken a gate into the corral. It's the only place with high grass. And these two reruns are in there. Of course. These two are getting along much better nowadays. Sharing food. Toonie's getting pretty big. These guys smell really bad. And they will probably until February-ish. Even when the girls stop going into heat, they still are going to smell terrible. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Wormer in general. Um, like I was saying, we live in the southeast region of the country. We live in the northwest corner of Arkansas, and so we're kind of borderline Midwest, but I would say in general, considering us um, the southeast, our climate's kind of temperament, a little bit more temperate than what I consider deep south. I'm from Mississippi originally, and this is not deep south weather. Um, it's just not as hot, and it gets a lot colder than if you live like in southern Tennessee, um, southern Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. So it's just a lot hotter. So the problem with that is there's a lot of resistance to parasite management, chemical wormers. And I've done a lot of research and I tried to really focus on research from extension offices at universities and not just people on blogs. Sometimes 
if you can find a really good breeder in your area, they can provide you a lot of really good information just from experience. But I really like to have the science to back it up. I'm a psychologist. I like data. Just kind of the way it is. So I'm going to go over the most popular wormers um, out there, the things that you can buy at your co-op or at um, your local farm store. And so the first, like the most common thing that you're going to see is ivermectin. And this is the kind that is available at our farm store. And I know it's backwards. Um, Ivermax. This is the um, injection for cattle and swine. And I'll link in the description below a chart of wormers based on like which one that you use um, dosage wise. And so you dose this differently than you would for cattle or swine. It's off label. All wormers are off label for goats just about. And this is oral. Everything that you're gonna worm a goat with that I'm gonna show you today, you do orally. Um, Ivermec is where I would start. If you're new, if you only have a couple of goats or haven't been animals on your property in a while, I would start with Ivermec. It's probably going to work. This worked for us the first few years with a few animals, but our property was a goat farm before we bought it, a meat goat farm, and they had some wormer-resistant parasites here on the farm. So we started with Ivermec. Something else that you're going to see a lot of is Safeguard, and it's going to be the one thing that looks... Um, like it's on label for goats. This is not effective for barbable worms, so for roundworms. According to all the research that I get from the extension offices in various parts of the country and from like Australia does a really um, a lot of research in this area for some reason and they have a lot of good information and just also southeastern universities like Kansas, um, Oklahoma, Nebraska, kind of, those are Midwest. Midwest schools do a lot of um, research. Safeguard's really good for tapeworm. So if your goat has a tapeworm, this is what you want to use. This is not going to help you for barbable worms, according to all the things, all the research. So Cydectin is the next one, and this is the sheep drench. There's different dosages for goats. Again, that will be in that chart that I'm going to link uh, from one of the universities. This is great. This works for us 95% of the time. This is pretty much my standard go-to with Cydectin. It's a little bit stronger version of Ivermec. It's in the same family. And this is Ivermectin. I always say Ivermec, but um, that's a brand. Ivermectin is the actual drug. Cydectin is the actual drug. Again, it's in the same family as Ivermectin. It's just a little bit stronger. So if you have a goat and you've been treating it with Cydectin and it's not working, you need something in a different family, and that's where Prohibit comes in. What have I done with this? Um, so this is, Prohibit comes in a little packet, and this is the actual drug name. I'm not going to pretend like I know how to pronounce it. Um, it comes in a packet and you mix it with water. I mix mine in a little quart mason jar because that's the um, extension office guide that I have. That's what they suggest, this strength for goats. And again, I just use their chart and their mix ratio. Again, this is off label. So this is for, you can see there's a little cow and a sheep, but there is no goat. So we use prohibit when cydectin's not working. So when I have an animal that is pretty invested and I'm not having any luck getting their worm count down and the vet is saying they're still packed full of worms. When I take a fecal, I'm going to use the prohibit and that has been almost 100% effective for us even with animals that were almost dead, honestly, from worms. So today we're going to use the Cydectin because that's my go-to. Um, I have, what I do is I keep a chart on my board of dosages. We're also going to try to grab a few girls and weigh them to make sure we get the dosage right. So it's really important that you don't underdose. With some of these, you have to be careful about overdosing them. Um, it can hurt them, but you don't want to underdose. So it's really important to kind of have an idea of how much your animal weighs. If you're within like five pounds, you'll be fine. Um, I have an idea of what my girls weigh. 
but I want to weigh a couple of them just to be sure. Daisy, I'm probably not going to be able to weigh just because she's a pain and she's not going to like it. But she's the one that I'm not 100% sure because she's huge. I can weigh two of the Nigerians and feel pretty confident about what weight range I'm looking at. Um, Pixie and Poppy need to be weighed mostly to see if they're heavy enough to breed. Um, so we're going to do that as well. But that's the wormers. I'm going to leave kind of a short description in short, like in the description, explanation in the description about each of these. And I'll leave some links. I have to order Prohibit. I have to order these off Amazon. Prime shipping. It's great. Uh, and it only lasts for 90 days. So once you mix it, you've got a 90 day timeline on it. So I have that. This is what we're going to do. Okay, one more thing before I forget. Herbal warmers. I like herbal warmers. It, they are not effective at treating parasites here. I think they're great for preventatives, but we're going to use chemical warmers because that's what's right for our animal. I'm all about doing what's best for the animal. Um, so these are Molly's herbals, and I'll leave a link in the description to these as well. And so this is something that it's kind of a system and you'll have to kind of read up about it, but you have to give it and this is the other one and they go together. And if they're pregnant, you do it a certain way. And if they're not pregnant, you do it a certain way and you give one for so many days and then you don't give it again for a month. And then the other one you give on maintenance. I think every day, I don't remember. I have to look at my sheet. They just haven't been super effective for us. Also, before we just totally move on, Corid is what we use for coccidia for our littles. Um, they get coccidia. The older goats don't as much. Um, but Corid is what we use. It's a five day treatment, so you give it five days in a row. Works great. Some people don't have as much success with it as I have, but it's all I've ever used for coccidia, for my littles, um, for babies, and I've never had any trouble. Also, copper bolus here goats. Um, if you look online and you see the bolus gun, it will freak you out and terrify you. Uh, I put this in a banana. It comes in a little capsule, like this, and that's just a little copper in there. I pop the capsule open and I make a hole in a piece of banana and stick it in there. They eat it all in one bite. Works great. Every You can do this every four months, but most people only need to do it once a year. My girls kind of got behind, so we're going to do a second dose in November because we did this in July. It is supposed to really help with worm prevention and their coats look fabulous when you do this. So that's our medicine for the day. I don't think I have anything else to show you with that. So let's go try to weigh some goats. Okay, we'll see how this works. Have to use the flexible tripod because they'll knock it over. Okay, Patty, you wanna go first? Nani's 57.8. Seventy two point four for CC. About ten.
Good. Ten point two. Off you go. Thirty pounds for Tabby. So my bottle in here, I just looked up all my dosage, so I'm going to start with the smaller girls. Um, and I remember I didn't look up how much to give Padme and Tink, but we're going to start with um, Bunny. So I'm just going to pull it into a syringe, and she needs 11 cc's or milliliters like this um, I set the camera on the table so I don't know how long this is gonna last and then we're gonna just get her CC get down okay. so I just put their head between my knees like this and kind of open up their mouth stick this as far back in their mouth as you can just since this is a lot kind of do it a little bit at a time so they don't spit it out because it doesn't taste great and that's all so cc weighs a little bit more so she's gonna get a bigger dose like that. Okay, I'm gonna get So one other tip about having the prohibit is always date it. So I mixed this up today even though I didn't use it um, just to have it and so I know that I mixed it on September 7th and so that means that it will be good until December the 7th. So you can see this is kind of all run together and I'll rewrite it here before long because we'll start with um, breeding and I'll have a breeding schedule. So I keep the days that I've wormed. These are their weights so that when I go back I'll know what their dosages are. Like Tink I'll have to reweigh, Padme I'll have to reweigh, and probably Poppy. Pixie's two. Um, it was good to see that she's 50 pounds. So I feel a little bit better about breeding her this year. And then I have some of the dosages for the Nigees down here. Always have to look up Daisy and the babies. But I find this is a really good way to kind of keep me on track as far as wormer and weight and weights for any kind of medicine that you give them or any kind of supplement. It's just good to know 
Um, I used this scale. It, I wouldn't recommend this. <laughs> we got this in an auction, like fairly cheap, and it works really well for the babies. Um, it just has this little battery operated thing, but it's really small and they can't, they don't stand on it well. And so they don't like it. So I end up picking them up and standing on it and subtracting out the weight a lot of the times. It's no fun. So I think we've seen you this morning. I am not just born cat. Probably need to do flea and tick on you today too, huh? Just medicate everybody. All right, let's go find gobbles and treat her eye. Okay guys, that's the end of today's video. I really hope you enjoyed um, learning a little bit about how we manage parasites. It's not a perfect science and different things work for different people. Um, we do use chemical warmers, so we're not considered organic, but here in the South it's very hard to manage parasites unless you're just dry stalling them. So unless they're on hay and feed full time and not um, on a pasture it's just really hard to manage so that's what we do those are the wormers that we use if you have questions leave them in the comments like I said I'm not an expert but I have had goats for four years and these are the things that have worked for me we don't worm on a schedule and that's something that's important like some people worm every so often whether their goats need it or not and we don't do that what we do is the FAMACHA scale and I'll put a link to that in the description I'm not an expert in it, so I'm not going to show you specifically how to use it, but there are videos out there. Um, and what that means is we lift their eyelids up and look at their color, and we worm based on the color of their eyelid. That seems to be pretty effective for us so that we don't overworm. So that's something good to know. Um, we'll do another video about vaccines. I'll do a video on hoof trimming. So those are kind of the basic things for goat care. The pigs here we talk talking, so they just came came running. You can't see them, but they're over here. Toonie thinks she needs something to eat. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it was helpful. Um, let me know if there's something else you want to know about how we manage our animals, something specifically that we do. Um, yeah, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Please like this video, leave me a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.